As you approach the, the trade deadline this year, how did you sort of weigh your short-term goals of making the playoffs with the long-term goals that you have for the roster? Well, I, I think you do that every day in the NBA. You, you're constantly monitoring how's your team doing, what direction is it going, what does it need? And different points of the season, you're, you're allowed chances to, to really remake your roster or do something to tweak your roster. Trade deadline's one of those. You know, obviously the draft and free agency, but during the season, the, the trade deadline, and nothing gets done without a deadline, it seems like. But uh, we, we, we knew, hey, we still got a lot of work to do on the defensive end. We got to continue to try to get more athletic. And I think those are things that happened today. Um, unfortunately, when, when you acquire players, other players have to leave. And I can't say enough great things about Troy Brown and Mo Bargner. They were tremendous teammates, tremendous professionals, tremendous people. And they're the kind of people that we really try to build around um, here. And I think the players coming in fit that same criteria, that same mold. So we're excited. At the same time, it's always sad to see people leave. Speaking of uh, players coming in, Chandler Hutchison uh, hasn't played uh, a game since early February. Um, mm -hmm. What's the latest with him? Do you expect him to report to the team uh, soon, or could he be away from the team? No, they'll both come in tomorrow, uh, have physicals, and should be hopefully – all three teams involved in this need the players to play in their next game. So you know, hopefully they'll be in uniform on uh, Saturday. And that's the plan. Um, with Chandler, he's, he did have some difficulties, um, definitely. Uh, and I'll let him relate to some of those, but uh, relay those to you. But obviously COVID uh, strikes different players different times and, and different effects. I think that was a setback for him that he's still kind of coming to grips with. But uh, it sounds to me from speaking to him to today, he had scrimmaged yesterday, was planning to play in the Spurs game with Chicago on uh, Friday. So he's prepared to play, ready to play. And that's somebody that, you know, we watched him, we evaluated him in his draft class. And uh, one thing we knew, he's a good wing defender and, and has some athleticism, has some things that we like. Um, I, I definitely think that Daniel Gafford brings us something that we did not have. Athleticism, a, a lob threat, uh, definitely a shot blocker. So, you know, sometimes you, you evaluate things what your needs are right now, and certainly try to continue to develop young talent. Uh, we said that from day one, we were going to look at a lot of players here. We, we start out everything, you know, we built this team around Bradley Beal. We did a very big trade in the off, you know, right before the season, obviously with Russell Westbrook. We drafted Rui a year ago, Denny this year, Davies Bertans, you know, Thomas Bryant. Uh, we lost him in the 10th game of the year, but we can't forget the contributions of Thomas Bryant and what he means to this team moving forward. So. Those are kind of your core guys. And then everybody else, we're just trying to find players that could come in and, and help build this, uh, and, you know, build this thing up. And I think in year two, we've seen some progress. We certainly want to see more wins, and we have high expectations of ourselves here. But certainly I'm pleased with the players, uh, you know, the contributions of certain players that we've had this year. We're pleased with the development of some of the young players and, and certainly couldn't say enough about what Bradley Beal has been able to do. We, we always want to win. That's the forefront of everything. But to win consistently and sustain them winning, you, you're going to have to really have a strong foundation. You have to have depth. So we're constantly looking to add to that depth. And I think that's something we were able to do today, too. Ava? Um, you discussed it a little bit with uh, Chris Miller there. But could you elaborate a little bit on what you guys saw um, with Daniel Gafford's ability to play at the rim in particular and, and his athleticism down there? Well, we unfortunately witnessed it firsthand a couple of times when we played Chicago that he's able, he's a quick jump, very powerful. He gets up in a hurry. Uh, he has some impressive offensive highlights, but for us, it's more about players are, are they're feeling him when they go down the paint. And there's a detriment to coming into the paint when he's down there. Is he, he's going to knock your shot back or he's going to really alter your shot at the rim. Uh, we think he's a pretty, uh, I think he's a dynamic lob threat. And that's something that Russell Bradley can take full advantage of and pick and rolls. I think he's going to be somebody that'll give us a, another dimension that we didn't have, like I said. Uh, really, he's only 22 years old. He has a great contract moving forward. That's somebody I think we can grow with and he's a good complement to what Thomas Bryant brings to us. And you guys obviously were one of many teams that didn't make, you know, there wasn't like a ton of blockbuster movement at the trade deadline, but just keeping your kind of core roster intact, what does that say about how the front office views um, your guys? Well, I, I think you got to be patient. And, and I'm a very impatient, patient person. You know, you know, it takes time. And you, you, you know that in your head, but you're still looking out there. And we had so many games early. We had a chance to win. We didn't. Then we got kicked in the butt by COVID. And then we got on a run. We went eight and three. And then we went on break. 
came back from break and, and we just haven't been able to put it together yet. But I still think coming out of break, we played some pretty amazing teams, uh, held our own, beat Utah. We, we took Brooklyn deep, Milwaukee twice, Philly. Now, those are the top teams in, in the, both the East and the West. And we, we fell short uh, and obviously had a bad outing the other night against New York. But we have 30 games moving forward. And we can only do anything about moving forward. We can't do anything about the games in the past other than learn from them. And I think the one, the big factor for us, Ms. Ava, is seeing us get better defensively. That's really when our team was at the best. The transition defense has to get better. We got to get back in that groove. I think we have to shoot the ball much better than we have. And you got to remember, we started this season, you know, Davies, Bertans, Thomas Bryant, Ish Smith, that's three of our top seven players. And we've been without Thomas since game 10. Ish has played 19 games. and. and Alvis has kind of been in and out, but I think we get him back, we get Ish back on the court. That adds to our depth, the quality of our shot making, creating, and, and I, I know that we'll be able to knock down more shots when Davis is out there. He has a gravitational pull. It's hard for Bradley when we don't have shooters out there. Bradley's getting double, triple team. Uh, Russell gets to the rim. That's good, but we need we need a third scorer to step up. And right now we're doing it by committee. I think Davis gives us that extra scoring threat. Um, I don't look for for Chandler or for Daniel to come in and shoulder a big scoring load as much as help us impact at the other end defensively. Thanks, Tommy. Absolutely. I want to wish everybody a happy Matt Quinn's birthday before we go any further. Matt is 22 years old. <laughs> Fred. I thought Matt was 17, so that was surprising to me. Well, his fake ID says 22. <laughs> Uh, Tommy, you mentioned at the lottery right off the bat, you said we don't plan on being here next year. I'm just wondering, given where you guys are in the standings right now, what your expectations are for this team for the remainder of the year and and, and kind of how uh, they've trended as you've kind of seen the season unfold. You know, and then the, at the beginning of the season, I think our expectations, I, I still have high expectations of this team. You couldn't foresee what happened to to this team. And certainly there's not, not making any excuses. But that's something we've had to experience, go through and deal with. And it's something that certainly hurt us uh, in the win column. Uh, but we move forward, still have high expectations. It's, those things take care of themselves. We'll see where we are at the end of the season. Right now, my whole focus is at the New York Knicks tonight. Let's go out and have a great game. And you also, you guys have a number of, of veterans who are on who are on expiring deals. How, how what was the philosophy going into, given where you are in the standings, what's the philosophy going into the deadline when you do have veterans who are on expiring deals meshed with a roster with a lot of young guys on, on rookie contracts? Well, the thing I love about when you bring in great vets, they really help pull along your young players and they're great mentors. And I can't say enough about those guys. We, we, we sign people very intentionally in contracts and, and years that we give out are very intentional because we have to keep an eye on our future and our budget moving forward. But I think each vet that we have that is that is on our roster right now, the expiring ones, I, there's no reason not to bring any of them back. You know, I think Howell's done a fantastic job for us. Ish has been just such a great spirit in our locker room every night. Robin uh, has been a tremendous backup center in the role that we projected for him. He's done more than what we hoped for. Uh, but, you know, moving forward, like I said, you can't keep everybody. But every player is going to give us a chance to tell us what to do by their by their ability out on the floor. You know, basketball is the ultimate meritocracy. You go out, you perform, you produce, and you're rewarded for it. Quentin. Hey, Tommy, did operating in a pandemic this season, just with everything going on and guys being out and things of that nature, did that impact you as, in, as a front office at this trade deadline in any way, ne negatively or positively? You know, Q, that's a great question. And I think it's no different for us than 29 other teams. Everybody has to deal with this. I think making deals at the deadline, um, certainly you take into consideration how hard is it going to be for that person to get up and leave, more than likely have to leave their family behind because their family's in a safe place and dealing with going somewhere else and getting established and the, the protocols and all that stuff is a little bit difficult. But at the end of the day, it's, it's basketball. And I think Players all want opportunities to play. The players coming in, they're going to have those opportunities here to play. And I think it has been difficult for us, but it's been difficult for everybody. And one thing I can't say enough about the leadership of Bradley Beal, the leadership Russell's provided um, to, to really help guide us through these tough times, you know, with Scotty Brooks 
obviously being at the helm as the head coach, I think we've been a very resilient team. We've taken a lot of punches this year and we jumped back up. Now we got another opportunity to jump back up with 30 games left. You know, the, the second half hasn't started out the way we wanted, not at all. I think we have games ahead of us to go back and, and let's get back in that groove and show what we can do. And also you've been in the league for a very long time. Is there maybe a formula that you have to use when it comes to making those calls for young guys or any type of guys that go out of the organization that you trade away, especially as you are a very personable GM and you really get to know these guys like Troy and Mo Wagner? How do you handle those conversations when you do have to ship them other places? Well, the first thing is you're happy for them because the team wants them somewhere. They want to bring them in and give them an opportunity to play. And, and I'm happy for them if we didn't have that opportunity here. Obviously, Mo has been in and out of the lineup, and, and it was a very, uh, I can't say enough about his contributions this year, but also he was expiring at the end of the year. And we're looking forward to with Daniel coming in and the contract that he has. We, we know we can grow with him and we at a fixed cost. It's a great situation for both of us. It's a great chance for Daniel to show us what he can do. And it's an opportunity for us to have a, another center under contract along with Thomas Bryant next year, rather than going to free agency with, with just Thomas under contract. I think the, the big thing with, with Troy and, and with Mo both, you know, I did, I spent a lot of time with people, Q, you're right. And I miss those guys, but this business is always about what's best for your franchise and moving forward and what you need. And, and sometimes what you, what you have here and you really, you, you like that, those guys and you want them to move forward with you, but what you need, they don't, they're not providing. You got to go get what the team needs. And I know the way that Bradley Beal plays, the way Russell Westbrook plays, having an athletic big who's a lob threat, that's a big thing. An athletic big that can get downhill in a hurry, a rim runner, that's a big thing. An athletic shot blocker, that's something we haven't had. So I think, you know, I've, I've watched Russell and Bradley really, really help a player's skill level raise quickly. You know, they, they make very good players when they're when you're playing next to Bradley. Very good players when you're playing next to Russell. They elevate the play of people. And I imagine they'll be able to do that with these two coming in. But our focus continue, make no mistake, we want to win. And we're building this thing up for Bradley as the cornerstone of our franchise. And, and you know, everything that we do is with that in mind, to keep this thing moving and get to sustainable winning every year. The playoffs is always the goal. We don't retreat from that. But we get to get there, you have to have depth. You have to have better players. And I think that's what we're moving towards.